Tarzan vs. Predator at the Earth's core, explored. The Predator has been such an iconic and intriguing character ever since it was introduced that it did not take long for the comic book world to introduce some fascinating crossovers. The hunting techniques of the mighty Yatcha meant that it was a formidable opponent even for some of the toughest heroes around. We have seen Predator crossovers with popular comic book characters such as Judge Dredd, Superman, and even Batman. Among the several crossovers, some of which are truly awesome, while the others are just about average. In some cases, the crossovers became memorable because of some epic battles. However, almost all of them were thoroughly entertaining and in this video, we will take you through one such crossover. <laughs> When it comes to Tarzan vs Predator, the face-off between the two Apex fighters does not come as a surprise to the fans. After all, they are both perfectly suited for jungle combat, and Tarzan is certainly a worthy trophy for the menacing alien hunter. But in this crossover, the Predator seems to have met his match, and there are some exciting duels between the two. Sit tight as we explore the Tarzan vs Predator crossover, because if anyone understands the Yacha code of hunting as well as a Predator, it's the Lord of the Jungle. Before we get into the video, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Tarzan vs Predator at the Earth's Core comic explained. The story begins with an interesting prologue that hints at Tarzan's fight against a mysterious beast that emerged from the hollow world of Pellucidar. After winning the fight, Tarzan has to test his fate in the ruins of the old city of Ur. Pellucidar is filled with some unseen and strange monsters that have a happy hunting ground. Until, well, let us save that for later. We have another mini prologue that shows the changes made after losing the Titanic to the hidden iceberg. To make sure that a tragedy does not recur, the International Ice Patrol has been established and their job is to scan the waters before a large ship passes by. During one such patrol, the men are somewhat relaxed because it's summertime and most of the icebergs have moved north. Suddenly, the crew witnesses something bizarre above the waters. They initially think to be a massive iceberg glowing in the dark, but soon, they realize that it is something else, something that looks like the sun has fallen. It disappeared suddenly as it had appeared, and there was no explosion or any sign of the gigantic structure. The crew reports this back to the headquarters, and you get a strong spaceship landing vibe from the whole event. Back in the wilderness of Africa, we see Lord Greystroke, aka Tarzan, presiding his over vast estate. With news coming in about the migration of antelopes, he expects a good hunt. When he suddenly receives a distress call on his radio, it reveals that the men sending the signal have reached the outer world near Pellucidar, and they have witnessed the beasts getting slaughtered there. Tarzan's friend and the emperor of Pellucidar has gone missing as well. One of Tarzan's men reminds him about their struggles in the mysterious world and how they managed to come out alive. After facing some powerful beasts along the way, the arrival of a plane breaks up their decision and discussion, and in comes Harrington Snefley, the special envoy for the President of the United States. He has come to inform Tarzan that his assistance has been sought regarding the mysterious event in the ocean, and his experience might come in handy in the mission. Tarzan decides to prepare for a trip to the icy waters of the Arctic, but he also has his missing friend in mind. But are the two events related? Stay tuned to find out. The ambassador isn't too concerned with Tarzan and his savage men, but he must comply with his orders. They travel through the polar opening, and soon their compass starts malfunctioning. It seems like they have finally arrived in the mystical land of Pellucidar. The ambassador is actually bamboozled, and absolutely bamboozled, at the sight of this strange land, and they come across some carcasses and skeletal remains of animals. They set up camp, and Tarzan wants to go in and explore the boneyard. When they come across the remains of the slain animals, Tarzan and his men discover that whatever killed the beast took away their heads as a trophy. When they return to their campsite, a nasty surprise awaits them. The guards have been killed and Kintu, one of Tarzan's trusted warriors, lies dead. Jane is missing as well, but it is no time to mourn the tragedy. A far greater threat awaits them at the end of these forests. Tarzan and his men are soon ambushed by the soldiers of Pellucidar. They are taken to the new king. He reveals that David Inez, the previous emperor, is dead, and Tarzan and his men would be taken as slaves. The new king has something planned for Tarzan, a similar fate to David Inez's. As Tarzan is being led by the soldiers, 
they are attacked by a deadly beast in the forest. It brings Tarzan to an unexpected freedom, although he is knocked unconscious. He wakes up to find human skulls near him, but for some strange reason, he has been spared. It doesn't take long for Tarzan to figure out that the attacker is some otherworldly predator that is seeking trophies as glory from the fights. But Tarzan will not be easy prey. He knows how to navigate through the densest of forest land, and his fighting skills are no less impressive than the Predator. They have their first encounter, and suddenly attacked by the Predator catches Tarzan off guard. However, he quickly turns the tides of this battle, and his victory cry echoes through the forests. There is suddenly a twist in the story, as the true colors of the ambassador are revealed. He finds out that Jane can be used as a bait to lure the attacker, and Jane gets to know that they have been played. Meanwhile, Tarzan has stripped a crucial weapon off the Predator and uses it to down one more. He finds himself in the abandoned city. While exploring the region, he does come across his dear friend, David Inez, the old king of Pellucidar. He leads Tarzan through the strange alien creatures, the predators, and how he had to manage surviving all this while. Tarzan informs him about the traitor Jason Gridley, who has usurped the throne in David's absence. Now that the two are together, surely they will find a way out of this mess. Troubles for Jane are mounting on the other hand. Jason seems to be smitten by her, and she has little choice but to submit to his mercy. The only glimmer of hope is that Tarzan and David are proving to be quite a handful for the Predators. They believe that they have hunted down the last of these alien threats. With the captured fancy weapons, they attack their spaceship, and it goes off in a deafening explosion. As they explore the trophy room of the Predators, Tarzan finds Jane's scarf, and he believes that she has been killed as well. One of the Predators that survived the attacks Tarzan tries to strike him down with great fury. The ambassador tries to contact Washington and seeks immediate assistance, but his message is cut short by the sudden appearance of a monstrous creature. Back in the palace, Tarzan and David find the traitor, and a few power-packed punches reveal that Jason has been under the influence of a Mayhar, a mythical monster of Pellucidar. David believes that they had failed to eliminate the last of these creatures, which had returned once again trying to bound humanity in slavery. They all take the fight to this Mayhar this time, tracking down the pterodactyl bodyguards of the monster first. After dealing with the Mayhar, they find the ambassador who has been captured by the beast. He is mortally wounded and dies shortly thereafter. The men, however, made a crucial mistake. They did not take into account the incredible Mayhar's mind-controlling powers. It hypnotizes Tarzan, making him attack the others. The Mayhar brings Jane to Tarzan, and their mind-controlled state, they cannot understand the events happening around them. The mythical monster declares them king and queen of Pellucidar to ensure the control of the Mayhar on the land it remains for all of eternity. We see a hypnotized Tarzan speaking the words of the Mayhar. He wants to rule with an iron fist and sever all ties with the outer world. David would be kept prisoner as an example for others who would dare challenge his authority. The Mayhar is delighted of the outcome. It has managed to ensure that the puppet rulers would be ruling Pellucidar. That would mean that all of the Pellucidar would actually be under the control of the Mayhar, like old times. However, just when it seems that all hope is lost, Tarzan's men who have been not hypnotized by the attack of the Mayhar, Muviro is one of the best warriors successfully slaying the beast and the spell is broken. Tarzan and Jane break out of the illusion and all is peaceful at last. Or is it? The Pellucidar attacks again and this time Tarzan leads men into battle. They ride the creatures of the forest into the fight and after the skirmish is over there is a massive explosion in the middle of the forest. The hunt is finally over for the apex predator and David is reinstated as the ruler of Pellucidar. Tarzan, Jane, and their fellow men bid goodbye to this ancient world and they leave for their own. The great writing was no fluke. People were surprised by the quality of writing on offer, but it was no fluke. The series writer Walter Simonson is credited with the first Alien comic titled Alien the Illustrated Story. The comic book adaptation of the first Alien movie and its free flow writing was well appreciated, even if the author was working on Tarzan vs Predator. Lee Weeks established as a face previously worked on for both Marvel and DC Comics, and his talents are put on display yet again. The editor of the series, Mike Richardson, happens to be the founder and publisher of Dark Horse Comics, and the co-editor has experience of working with both Tarzan and Star Wars comics, so we have a team of veterans and they deliver the goods as is expected of them. Our final words. You know that the thought has popped up in your mind by now. 
So let's just say it out loud. A live action adaptation of Tarzan vs. Predator has the potential to be absolutely blockbuster. It has all the elements of a perfect action thriller with some incredible fight scenes between the two powerhouses. There's enough suspense in the story to keep you going and with the right special effects and a decent production budget, it can go a long way. However, as of now, nobody has spoken about putting this to work, so you can breeze through some of our other videos on the Predator in the meantime. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good day and be safe. Thanks, everyone.